a hot second. Pills. <clears throat> well, they're in some technical difficulties. Give me a hot second. He's live, folks. I see him. Not for me, he's not. Well, nope. it's your fault. I see him live. <laughs> Twitch, stop fucking me. Yeah, I definitely recommend using watching the Twitch stream in, in the process because I can't screen share. <laughs> Uh, um, lest it fuck up the car, <laughs> the, the cameras, <laughs> which I can do just by pulling OBS over it. <laughs> the fuck is this? This video is only available to su subscribers of Dire Mo. Huh? That's what it says for me. subscribers do you have? I don't have subscribers. <laughs> We're not big enough to have subscribers. <laughs> what the, the fuck? fuck? <laughs> what did this happen? <laughs> it's what it's telling me. All right, you know what? Fuck you. We'll, we'll be back. You're... <laughs> how are how are you so? Nah, that's not even a moo thing. That's Yoshi. What happened to your shit? <laughs> now I can see it. Now it says the stream will start shortly. Now it's showing me the picture. See, I told you. You'd never I can't it. fucking. It's still live, bro. It's still up. I can help it if Twitch fucks me. Can Uchi? Right. Let's let's fucking sort this. <laughs> oh God, Photoshop. Yeah, I said you're gonna need a, a, the the stream open so you can actually see. Any diagrams I have to draw, because no doubt I'm gonna have to touch on the Austin or Hall theory, which is like the main basis of all magic. Oh, you might as well come out the gate with that motherfucker. I like seeing your cameras flopped. Flopped? Yeah. What do you mean? In Twitch, you're looking to the left. And in Discord, you're looking to the right. You probably mean mirrored. <laughs> One hop this time. Or flopped, you know. <laughs> Chris, you guys understood. Yeah, I kind of understood. Bleh. 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 Yeah, but I didn't know what you were saying until you spoke it out entirely. I was like, oh, mirrored. Flopped. It sounds like it's so... Like, I thought, I thought you meant, like, the camera like... was down. And I was like, no, it's not. I can see perfectly. We said flop. I was like, I would be like, Moose Face was a bad movie. I mean, that's in general, man. <laughs> Look, I'm real high, so mirrored. It didn't come to mind. It was uh, never going to come to mind at that moment. To be honest with you, I think <laughs> we're used to it after four so we years. We're working hard enough. <laughs> we're used to it after four years, Kenny. It's all good. <laughs> Hell yeah. Right, so. Uh, for anyone who might stumble across this, once Hess finally posts to our community Discord. Which oh, I never which I can't actually post today because OBS is right below the cameras, <laughs> so it'll fuck everything. So yeah, so we're gonna. Oh fuck! Probably introduce what this is in case there's new viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Mo. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Phylactery Podcast, the podcast in which we talk about our D and D world and all things geek and nerd. I'm joined by three lovely players, minus our friend Jeeves, who is currently doing the Nerexmas? Nexoramas? Nerexus. Nerexus yep. raid, and wow. It is, but is he's being a big nerd with, well, other nerds, and being an average sized nerd with the rest of us. We support uh, Well, there's just a lot of nerd conundrum going on here. I mean, we, su I mean, we support it, but I will still make fun of his doish ass every chance I get. Sure. And it's hard as, to do because... And it's hard to do because... I do not know enough about Jeeves to make fun of him for anything effective. <laughs> None of us do. No one... I don't know his real fucking name! He's the last <laughs> person! He's the last one on the list! <laughs> we don't know his name, we don't know his what age. Do he said it. Oh, it's Jeeves. But Jeeves is Jeeves. <laughs> 
Yep. No, he's funny. posted it before. I just don't remember what it is. It was so long ago, I've probably forgotten. It's probably like in year yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, you could probably find it. You could search Discord. I could probably search Roll20, actually, because I did ask for people's names originally. Or your handle. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, I prefer my handle to my actual name. Yeah. Uh, you know my real name. Well, yeah, no. my first name, anyway. I think I know your last and name as well. I have well. like a LinkedIn page. Anybody with decent Google Foo could find me, so it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm on LinkedIn as well. <laughs> Gotta keep a professional standard. <laughs> oh, I know. I know the feeling. Oh, it sucks. I, I think I made a LinkedIn like a couple years ago. I haven't touched it since. <laughs> yeah. I rarely touch it. Uh, I'm a hot saying. I need, I need to do that just to get rid of... Uh, Rid of the old uh, Lake Dead has got me exactly zero jobs so far. It's got me one and it still pays me even though I'm at home all day. So I'm not complaining. It's all about the connect connections. Talk talk. <laughs> <laughs> the concoctions. The con the brand. I feel like you were trying to say connumptions. Connections. I, I don't know what the fuck I was trying to say. Cape Canaveral. I also said connections, which is, well, a temper tantrum. I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to jot it down as I had a stroke. <laughs> Go back ah. in this VOD and get a sound clip for your board. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to pull that down. It's a. Uh... I'm gonna reset my I imagine there will be a day when we see something funny or stupid enough for Yoshi to actually add to his soundboard. And we'll never I mean, down. the best thing that came out it's was... Already happened. Yep, right there. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, you're already you're did you're it. Gonna... I'm on that bitch. Caught. Strong. I just... I had a straight-up stroke, and I gave up on that word. I was like, Strong? Nah. Because, <laughs> like, halfway <laughs> through, like, I have a fucking... Now. <laughs> have a strong... <laughs> You see, a task well done is, um, well, half done, as they say. <laughs> and task, task failed successfully. The <laughs> <laughs> task that I was starting to write is doomed for failure. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh -huh. oh. yeah, uh, where were we? We just introduced the, the podcast. <laughs> yeah. All right. uh, you, you were going to introduce yeah. us, and then we just got yeah. derailed. It's going to be magic and magical theory. So, more yeah. nerdy than our, usually, than our usual fare. But that just means I get to rake new <laughs> over the cold. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a super nerdy episode. Yeah, and then afterwards, once the stream's done, we're playing some Uno. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! And I am yeah, never right. streaming it. I'm, I'm gonna go fucking that. record it this time. <laughs> I'm gonna go on that eight win winning streak, boys. Uh, Man, fuck wait. you, fuck you, dude. That's yeah, that's that's safe. <laughs> oh, okay, but, all right. Let's uh, just in case we find the one person who's never heard the word mill. What at least in your setting is magic? What is what magic? When we wiggle our fingers to the right words and zap each other with lightning bolts. Well, what I'll do what is, is I shall use our little template here to move away from our So there we go. Well, magic in terms of current day your thumb is a construction of centuries of tried and tested uh, attunement to nature, to the arcane dimensions, and to uh, powerful bloodlines if you're a blood mage. Uh, <clears throat> the understanding of it has significantly improved in the past 50 years, thanks to uh, Ostener and Halimer, who are two... I wouldn't say artificers are arcana mechanics, more just like scientists, scholars, uh, experimentors uh, who discovered how magic actually works. Uh, in a sense, has to they had to visualize it in a limited capacity. Uh, but current day understanding is that magic is a rudimentary function of some societies, and it is almost entirely compatible with new technology uh, or all technologies. 
<clears throat> like you could have magic powered lamps or carts or trains, which is a new thing that people are still working on. I want a magic powered lava lamp. <laughs> Sure, his little fire elemental is dancing around in suspended animation. Hell yeah. Yeah, I imagine if you just tossed um, an artificer about 150 gold on a decent weekend, they could get it done. Yeah. Okay, so basically, magic by itself does not have a hard definition. It's the yeah. two and two various forces yeah. out there through... That keeps that centuries of well experimentation. Yeah, it, the, if I was to blanket the term, it's more of a like a almost like religion. It's more of a personal subjection than objection. So magic to say uh, a farmer could be uh, appeasing the gods one day for a bountiful harvest and getting that that is magic in their eyes. But to say a well versed wizard. You can just make it rain at will, almost, if you wished. So there, there are two <clears throat> different ways. So, uh, like I was saying about the uh, the wizard, they would define magic as just their life now uh, and learning uh, the secrets of the multiverse, essentially. Uh, All right. My next question for you is this: Moo, mm -hmm. does magic all does, ma does magic have one single source, or is it dozens of other sources? And you mentioned things like um nature and bloodline. Yeah. So what makes um what makes them? Actually, let's. I'll save that one for later. Yes. I'll to give the basic one. What is the source of magic? Does it all come from one source, or the various sources? Okay. So I'm gonna need like, to talk about vodka like for this one. Um, yeah, okay. That's true. Um, like if both, like if a cleric and a druid are both waggling their fingers and casting the exact same spell, mm -hmm. are they drawn from two different sources of power or the same interpreted through a different lens? Okay, so this is when I'm going to need to whip out Photoshop here. So let's see. Um, well, before usually we get mm -hmm. before we get super heavy into like what magic is for everybody that's trying to follow along or that may try to follow along in the future maybe you should touch on how magic was introduced <clears throat> into the world Oof. because it was during the war right? Uh, or, or um, the war. <clears throat> it was during um, an event called the Convergence which is when oh, yeah. the multiverse the just it was pre-colossi in general, like everything just pushed into itself. Kind of like a reverse Big Bang, it just sucked in instead of went out. Uh, best way to, uh, so the gods that exist, they're in current terms, there is believed to be one creator god, but originally there were I think it was uh, nine creator gods, and they were from different multiverses, and they just got pulled together and formed one figure, essentially, just merged. And then offspring came about, and those gods ended up merging and became a big mess. And then once these mergings had happened, they released so much energy, it kind of got trapped in some sort of extra dimensional space. And when the creator gods formed the uh, the multiverse in their uh, image, that residual energy sapped through all the material and it eventually just started... It's like radiation, almost. It's the best way to describe it. Background radiation. Sometimes very intense, sometimes very minimal. So high-intensity magic spots could be positive or negative. That's where wild magic comes from. That was the first evident uh, source of magic. Uh, and then the primordials, the colossi, they were the base elemental... Uh, what's the word? 
factors or uh, variants. So you had your fire, your earth, your air, and your water or cold damage. And that was the, the basis of the four elements. And then they died. Uh, one in the future and one potentially even further in the future and then two in the past. <laughs> Timeline's all fucked up, but it's all good. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, one will die in the future anyway. And for those who care, the original creator guard was called the Dawn Father, correct? Uh, different names. Uh, currently, it's called the Dawn Father, but it's been called the Maker, um, the uh, the Divine Light, uh, the Sculptor. Just so many different names uh, under the sun. If you want to be monotheistic, they're generally the big the big cheese, as it as it were, um, but there's that many variations. Like, the the Dawnfather you guys met in Campaign 1 is not the same one that you could meet in the future, because there's nine of them. <laughs> so, so much variance. So, fundamentally speaking, the origins of magic in and of itself is the essentially leftover corona of power from the fusion of the, air quote, Dawnfather. So the Dawn Father is fundamentally speaking the origin of all forms of um, magic. It's, now, like any yeah. other energy, does magic follow like the laws of like conservation? Like when magic is used, is it expended or is it merely changed from one form to another? Uh, that is a great thing that takes me to the ho oh, Stenner Holomer theory. <laughs> Which is a big thing, so I'll wait until that. But basically, if I was to describe it, the um, oh damn you, Ashi, what's with your uh, what's with your virtual cam, dude? <laughs> uh, I could describe it in two shapes, the uh, two forms, and that's a circle and a triangle. Uh, the conservation of magic or mana is described in the triangle, which is generally with these arrow shapes. And there are three points uh, on it, which are the three stages between the two, or between the three sides. Uh, I can't remember the symbol that they use, and I think it was... There was a weird symbol that was similar to the... I think it was... Bleh. I think that was their symbol. That's close enough. And my tablet is almost falling off of its stand. Give me two cents. So, when magic is used, which is usually between stages two and three, uh, it is expanded and it will branch off to become re residual or uh, residual. I can't spell residuum, but I think that's how you spell it. I don't know. So it's basically just leftover energy. So that's how uh, a ganomancers work. They can track magic, like a magic fingerprint almost. Um. So that'll happen. It can transfer in heat, light, or sound. Like, thunderclap will make a big-ass noise. Uh, knock makes a really loud noise. Uh, uh, heat metal, that's a form of this triangle, which just transfers all the energy into heat uh, as possible. Uh, I'm just going to make this a little bit more simplified as possible. So, boop-boop, 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 boop-boop. Uh, let's recover, rest, and use. Alright. So, basically, I explain spell slots. <laughs> uh, so, <clears throat> think of it kind of like a water that will move to a like a more natural state so salty water will obviously dilute itself over time like uh, osmosis so if you've burnt out all your magic and you rest you start to passively absorb magic so you do eventually build up and recover uh it's bad like fuck it is radiation in the best sense of the word which is Something that is beyond the knowledge of people in the current <laughs> timeline. And I'd imagine to explain growth, the repetition of that process, 
uh, expands upon itself. Are you meaning like increasing your power, like your spell yeah, slot level? So like accessing higher level spells okay. and stuff. So to explain it, does that mean like, so when Zuka's level one, you know, he recovered, <laughs> used rest after a spell, and he got his one slot back, but after he did it more and more times, does that explain how, like, wizards, as an example, end up at late game becoming huge wells of magic. Yeah, so that moves into the circle uh, of the Osterner Hall theory, which is usually divided into your your slots, which is considered, uh, this is your neutral, and this is divided further into positive and negative mana, which is generally, that's red, that's blue, and that's usually like a pale yellow color. Uh, so when, the, say this is your level one uh, wizard, and if over time this circle will begin to look a lot more like this, um, <clears throat> with your basic, uh, what's the term? Your reserve will get bigger, so this circle grows in size and it starts to divide itself, you naturally start to designate certain things, but each of these segments equals one, essentially. And so say you fire off a, a wish spell, and you've got nine of these sitting around, you burn up a fraction of those nine, so you get rid of like a portion of all those slots and it reduces the amount you can cast afterwards so you kind of got like a a small graph that starts to slowly shrink down until you have just the baseline with your neutral at the top and if you use uh so i'll just put l20 and you use uh what's the uh, wizard thing arcane recovery to get a couple of spell slots back you tip you dip into the neutral and turn either negative or positive all right, but the the theoretical explanation behind that though is that due to the repetition of the process, or is that something with the body itself, or a combination of the two? It is due to you know, from like you know having a very small amount of tap into magic to having an incredible amount. Yeah, it's uh. Let me go to a deeper part of the theory. Okay, it's called the divining rod theory. It's a... Uh, I can't spell today, apparently. <laughs> uh, it's a segment uh, of it, which is... Uh, I'll draw a little, a little, uh, a little wizard here. Uh, with a little wand and a, a little book. You can tell I practiced art like four years ago. <laughs> it's uh, Harry Potter, dude. Um, so essentially, if that's your wizard at level one, you've got a little bubble around you and you uh, use it all up. Like, oh no, use it all up. What are you going to do? You take a nap. Uh, essentially, so you're empty, you're tanked out. And think of your magical reserves kind of like a, a water balloon. So at the start, you've kind of got this small bit and you've got a little bit of mana in there. As you rest, you sometimes begin to overfill that balloon and it gets bigger. Uh, but it remains that size. It doesn't retract again. And by level 20, that balloon is like that big and it's like fucking tipped to the top. <laughs> Almost full of bursting. And say you hit level 30 with your level 18 spells, you have two balloons. And then you're basically target from the gods. <laughs> They're like, fucking stop that. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's your level 1. That's, say, your level 3. You've got a little bit more in there, and that's your level 20. So you got a big balloon, essentially. Uh... I'm gonna... And so... Okay, yeah. so if... Using the balloon theory... Mm -hmm. If it's a balloon, then... What stops... 
your balloon from filling if all you did was rest for an extended period of time. Stops your balloon from filling. Okay. Yeah. So So if you're like if you're when you're resting you're passively <laughs> gaining the the mana back or the magic back into your body and your balloons filling up to the the point <laughs> but if you continued resting and not using that what's stopping it versus when it does overflow okay this is the last part of the theory which is called the Ostener hall limit this is what they hypothesized, and they've pro uh, they've proven it. So, say you've got three spell slots, and you you need to put that a little bit lower. Oh, uh, can you not see it? Cameras. Okay, so give me a hot second, then. Uh, I will just lasso that shit and what? Better. Uh, so this is your stay on hall limit. So you've burnt up all three. So you use three out of three. When you rest, you basically, this is saying your body's tapped out. So you've got, got to keep drawing the triangle upside down. You've got an empty balloon, like a little puddle at the bottom. The Ostener Hall limit is an imaginary rod inside the balloon that if you overfill, it just lets the mana pour back out and you start radiating a little bit more. So you'll wake up either with a cold sweat, a hot sweat, or you just release it through breathing mostly and back into the the air so eventually that'll f uh, fill up uh that is that is not a balloon that is something i'm pulling that's a different kind of balloon <laughs> all right when it comes to um so you got a little balloon and blah, 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 blah. once it's all, all right, overflow come to like um spell caches and such here's my question mm -hmm. if given you know the right instructions in the wherewithal can any creature cast even the most basic form of mech if given enough knowledge opportunity and wherewithal like is it locked to any particular genetic um structure or is it more something you can do with like a bit of willpower and some people just have more talent than others mm -hmm. so Say, uh, you have so a... like, in theory, if he was willing to put his mind to it, can someone as dumb as Spitz cast a cantrip? Okay, so this comes under an idea of inherited or nurtured. Uh, so nature, nurture, essentially. Uh, magic. So your inherited magic are your sorcerers and some, some magical beings, like, uh, dragons. And your nurtured people are like your wizards, bards, etc. Uh, essentially, once you usually reach the age of about five, or your equivalent in uh, your race, you dev you start producing sort of like a protein almost so you've got your blood cell you've got i don't know a white blood cell and you've got this kind of weird star shaped thing that starts to be developed and this is a a mano globin uh which is a receptor for magic and these things don't float about they stick to stuff so your blood cell will look kind of like this eventually if you do not produce enough of this stuff you can't cast magic so if you've got a really magical family you've got a greater than say 80 percent chance and say you don't have magical parents but you've got uh, a magical ancestor you've probably got a 10 percent chance so someone say like spitz who has no magical ancestor you have a less than five percent chance of being able to develop magic but through training you could increase that by maybe a factor of two so you'd have a 10 percent chance like a 
a low magic family. But 80% is usually like your, your sorcerers, etc. These are usually your sort of maybe, I'll say, arcane tricksters. And these could be your monks, and uh, EKs, etc. So if you're 80% and you if you have like highly magical family and things, mm -hmm. is it then a genetics thing? Because we could make a character that like there's no magic in the family, but someone way, way in the past was magical, and that's where the magic came from. Yeah, that's that's where the 10% the factor comes in. It's rare, but once that appears in the bloodline again, that factor goes up to an 80%. So it's the, the proximity of that ancestor. Say uh, it was like a, a pact you made, like your fat your ancestors made with like a dragon or something, and you become a draconic sorcerer just suddenly. That becomes your 10%. But now you're that 10%, and your next generation, if you have kids, have an 80% chance. Because the bloodline is right there. It's adjacent. It's not fractioned. So it kind of like dwindles off yeah. through the generations. It does die off, but there is a, a, um, like a magical switch almost for them. Damn, my chili's getting cold. Mm -hmm. Gotta spice it up. Ah. Yeah, here's here's another important question. Yeah. Now, what is the effect of magic on people, like physiologically speaking? Okay, like, what like what for, context? Like does like like it's in this context. Now, people just exist within this background radiation or corona of like magic. Now, mm -hmm. radiation in nature basically tend to mess with whatever um, living issue is nearby, mm -hmm. altering its DNA strands with mutations typically for the worst. So for the characters within like the Urathon um, mm -hmm. setting, mm -hmm. would, for instance, like magic change the people within as they um, grow up? Like we know for a fact that in Urathon, the years are way longer than they typically should be, than they are as compared to Earth. Yeah. But human lifespans are relatively the same <laughs> so, within, the, or within like the setting, despite the fact that that would mean that, okay. like in comparison, like I did the math for this like a while back, Vincent in the campaign was fifty-five. Yeah. In Earth years, he'd be in his like eighties. Yeah. But it's still effectively in the best shape of his life, air quotes. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll take your idea of say seventy five year old, uh, <clears throat> human, a human, beming, human. So over time, I think I've mentioned this maybe in like a small quip that uh, wild magic, the mm -hmm. untamed stuff, will change things over time so that's how you get things like um your uh, elemental uh mundane creatures like bears like fire bears and stuff uh so they will form based on the prime elemental aspect so cold fire poison or um uh, lightning or thunder depending so over time, a person exposed to a shitload of wild magic over that 75 year period will assume, uh, we'll say when baby, so big chunky baby, uh, they're exposed to a, a high dose of radiation and then over their lifetime, like small pockets, so say like plus one, plus one, uh, when they're like old and you know, a little, little Zimmer frame, like that. Uh, they've got like a tiny amount left over because they radiate it out. Their body will be physiological dif uh, different. So, oh, say... Um, that's a good example here. Uh, there's a perfect example. So your wild mage, 
I'll, I'll just draw like with horns because most of them are tieflings anyway. So that blah, shazam. Look at that with a little tail. And they turn into a potted plant. All of a sudden, they have mitochondria appear in their DNA and like uh, chloroplasts just generate. So they have plant DNA now as well as their natural DNA. So that sort of magic can just wildly change. So a druid will eventually end up having animal DNA. Um, uh, blood magi are different. They gain uh, corruption. So magic for them, using the, the old thing here, with your, your neutrals and your positive and negatives, that eventually just disappears and all becomes negative positives. So just total negatives. And they can't absorb magic properly anymore so their thing their triangle looks the same but their recovery goes outwards and then comes back down because this becomes uh absorption because they will sap magic from other people instead of just surrounding them that's why they'll use blood and everything because that's a great source a uh, great source of proteins uh, but then eventually they will just burn it up and you know rest repeat and then you get a lich <laughs> pretty much something that <clears throat> just came to mind uh, if they like say a uh blood magic user would have like a basically a blood transfusion would that be the same thing as real world where if you have two different types would they just not accept it or would it actually alter what they currently have it would kind of like a bone marrow transplant for a leukemia patient it will <clears throat> reset their corruption on their bloodstream I'm just going to try and line up this so I know where to to draw so, uh, I'll draw a, a spooky skull. Let's go. Bleh, and a bleh. I'm great at art. <laughs> She's a true artiste. Uh, so, you've got, say, max corruption. So, I'll just say that. So, you're max negative, essentially. And then you get some bone juice. Uh,. Or blood, which is bone juice, actually. Uh, you eventually will just reset. You just become normal again. Uh, bleh, bleh. And that's... Uh, sorry, that's drawn wrong. I should be neutral. So you just reset. It's basically just factory resetting someone. And if their body accepts it, they're fine. If it doesn't, it... Now, this is lore that I only just scrubbed up on earlier, which is called mana cannibalism. I wrote this about eight years ago because uh, I was writing a short story about a, a mage that had a, a hunger for other mages, uh, not in the, the, the good way. Uh, it all follows the same process, but instead of resetting... You don't have a straight line anymore. You eventually just have this whole segment all negative and that bit's just your neutral there. So it just consumes even more of your own base and you need to consume more and more uh, of the the source. And anyone that reaches like total... Oh, fuck. Uh, you become uh, an aberration. So, uh, like a blood elemental, things like that. Or a, um, what the heck's the creature called? A, um, one of the, it's like the shadow fell creatures. The lost or whatever it's called. The sorrow and whatnot. You become consumed by the, the blood hunger. Pretty much. Because as soon as that shit runs out, you're dead. Game <clears throat> over. Okay. So then they basically end up turning into mindless creatures that then get summoned by other 
blood mages, and then basically the cycle just continues. Or like you theoretically. know, theoretically, clerics and shit like that. You know. Uh, so if magic is like background radiation in the world, mm -hmm. then going back to what Rook was saying earlier, if a druid and a cleric are both casting the same spell next to each other, does like nature and like divine magic and arcane magic all get filtered through a lens? of some sort or yeah. is it all using the same all right so that brings me to the the one i was talking about earlier so say your cleric and your druid okay um say they cast cure wounds because they both have that uh the space is on your one two three four five sources of uh, magic which are the self so genetics nature uh, uh, passive uh, cosmos and divine so, a cleric draws their magic from divine realms, so that usually comes across as a cleric is essentially making a deal with their god when they cast magic, when they make a prayer uh, for cure wounds, like to bless someone to survive, and basically the, I don't know what a good drawing of god be let's draw a, a, an eyeball let's do that with like fairy wings or something like that and if they they will grant this extra like kind of like a a red bull almost so like say let's add a little kind of red bull here i can't draw a bull so do that then you get the, you know the the magic juice but a, a druid will draw it from the trees instead which are a tertiary uh vector because magic is kind of like it's kind of like a what do you call them like a radio mast so magic will just like string between trees Blame the Fae, they did this. And you basically got up like a power line of magic that will stretch across a forest. And a druid, uh, a, no, let's draw some antlers or something like that, but will draw either on the line between natural things or from the earth itself, from where the roots are absorbing most of the energy from there and then using a part of their self to emanate it. It's the best way I could describe it. It's a complex idea to draw out. All right, well, hold on. Now I got a question about that. Yeah. So the, the electrical lines between the trees, mm -hmm. is that the same similar or completely different from the ley lines of the lands? Ley lines are very similar to it. The They are... So you've got... Uh, let's draw a little uh, forest here. Let's draw this. You've got your power lines between the trees. A ley line is kind of like the main source of energy, and that usually comes from uh, an area of high magic. That's right, how I am, into a place of low magic, kind of like how water goes down a river. So, a ley line is your best source of power for a druid. So, a higher magic, like, say, a seventh level spell or something like that, will draw from the closest one 
So if you're like a thousand miles away from the closest one, you'll draw it from that distance. You will use kind of like a capillary action to the earth to suck all the energy from that area and then use it. Kind of the best way I can describe it. If you're underground, you draw it from the, the, the rocks as well. So if you're under a mountain, that's how you can still cast magic. Man, it's been a while since I talked about magic theory. I feel like I'm describing this like a fucking two-year-old. <laughs> so, if there were like multiple wizards casting the same, or at least like the same level uh, spell at the same time, mm -hmm. would, would that eventually lead to like either all the spells being somewhat diminished or at least one of them being disrupted? There's too many of them? Uh, magic is a Kind of like energy and radiation, it's a constant feature of the world. So, uh, two wizards like casting... Background radiation, right? Yeah, it's similar like to... World, it. Background yeah. radiation does nothing. Like, radiation exists everywhere on different mm -hmm. factors. Yeah. Okay. Like Non-harmful, yeah. just background shit. Yeah. A, a ley line, in terms of magic, is like a Chernobyl event. It's caused by one... Chernobyl fireball, I'll, I'll say. Best way I could describe it. Um, so that's your, your two sources. When a mage, say, walks to that source, there is a chance that the spell will fail, their magic will disappear entirely, or it will be amplified to a point where their body might just explode. There's a chance. But in the low zone, everything works normal. Between the, that main source to the bottom, you're fine. All magic operates the same. Uh, All right, there's, um, here's a question about the uses of magic. Okay. Is all use like is all use of magic intentional? Like, is it something you can only do with intent and practice, mm -hmm. or like a focus of some kind, or do people use magic like every day and not even notice it? You know, like, would, for example, a fighter's second wind be, like, an act of a magic, albeit an unfocused and weak one? Is that... That is actually a great fucking example. So, a fighter's second wind, uh, to... We'll use Coronar's example, which is 2d10 plus 3, if I'm not mistaken, at the moment. Yep, with, yep, with Giphy Glyph's rules, it is 2d10 plus 3. We'll just say GGDD. Um, they draw upon power within the self, which isn't called mana usually, it's just called stamina. That is usually just what it's called. Um, but it is just a small portion of mana uh, that is sourced from just exercise and improving the self. Like how a monk can just channel their self into making magical punches. That's how they operate. And it's such a drain on that reserve, you need to wait a little while before you can use it again. But as you get more and more physically better, and you, I can't remember when you get in the next second wind, uh, that eventually doubles your reserve. Oh, so fundamentally speaking, Hit dice are just um, some of that. It's your neutral that, I guess, mana. Neutral magic <laughs> inside the blood. Yeah, that's what it is. Every creature is somewhat magical. Some people just have more positive and negative than neutral, or some just have neutral. That's what the uh, the lack of that uh, mana globin is. It's just neutral. You're just okay. receptive. All right, so yeah. essentially a barbarian's rage amongst he, or in this case, or in my case, a pugilist from Moxie, yeah. might just be essentially yeah. the use of internal neutral mana or power. Pretty much. That's what like a base magic weapon is, like a plus one. That's a neutral magic weapon because it's just inherently magical. It has no real elemental features or effect. It just hurts things that are magically resistant which are creatures that tend to have more negative energy than the rest so the neutral just sort of gets rid of that problem 
Is there a tie between one's internal magic and stamina and the concept of, you know, hit points? There is somewhat. I was working on it because I was like, okay, I'll try and breach the gap between the uh, the, the the OS theory. Um, the best way I could think of it, uh, you've got a D6 hit die because I can't be ass drawing uh, any dodecahedrons or anything like that. So one D twenty. Fuck that i can't i don't remember what sh numbers are on a d6 so that's your d6 you want one d6 left to burn and you use that and you get a three plus your con so if you're a wizard you probably got one the best way i could describe it your con mod is your recovery rate so if your con mod's a plus one you're going to recover a fifth of what a fighter could later on uh, and I'll just write F. Uh, and I'll just write W there. And the intensity of that recovery is dependent solely on how you divvy up your magic. So a fighter is purely neutral. They're they're completely neutral magic users, unless you're an EK that or a the hell's the other Psy Knight or whatever or a Rune Knight or whatnot they use their own forms of magic but a wizard has to divide their magic between neutral positive and negative and generally they'll focus more on those two bits because that's how magic works is the reaction between these two so they're left with a tiny amount of neutral magic which is why it's a d6 and not like a d10 but a barbarian um, is a d12 so they use a shitload of neutral magic to rage yeah, so rage is like an emanation of neutral magic. Yeah, like an okay, overload. Okay, so with this basically, um, I guess so the reason why like clerics, wizards, and sorcerers have less air quote meat points than fighters and warriors <laughs> isn't because they're not as physically tough, like their skin isn't as you know hard. It's that um, their like allocation of magic is divvied up towards these is divvied up such that they have less neutral mana for things or mm -hmm. more mundane things like yeah. recovering from exhaustion. Or mm -hmm. And that's exactly what it is. Like, um, a really good, like, um, class example would be, um, uh, druids at their later level when they can wild shape constantly. That is a shitload of neutral magic, but they are so attuned to it. They just, Basically, just loan from nature. They're just sucking a ton and then just change rapidly. So they're constantly replenishing. That's how they can live for such a long time as well. As the same as monks, they will channel the self and just basically slow down their body's aging process by constantly refreshing and burning through that neutral power. So they don't look old. They are always fast. They're always hitting you like a tank. And then eventually they just die. So I got a couple questions about the neutral power then. Yeah. Uh, so key specifically, is that more like how is, is stamina essentially neutral power yeah. and it's separate from like a body's normal stamina? It's like just what they call the yeah. neutral power inside someone? Yeah, so neutral so mana is just the amount of physicality you have it's the uh better word i could describe it, it's just your your health it's just your physical health uh essentially so your neutral is just the body it's just you big beanie baby body and then the positive negatives are just like add-ons that you don't purchase they just happen so is it due to neutral magic then that, like, say, a level three paladin becomes immune to diseases? Yeah, or is that it is. Else? It's through um, your. I'm the add on a new layer. I'm on layer eight already. So a paladin is a good example because you become immune to a disease. Uh, you essentially. Mm, 
So that's what your oath is your uh, developing self. I don't know what you wrote. It's a little too high. I, I just wrote paladin above that. Oh, okay. Uh, as your developing self. Uh, so as you progress and continue to develop yourself through that oath and through physicality, you eventually grow your neutral ability. And that oath becomes the... Uh, oh, what the hell is the word I used? And the uh, binding... Uh, oh, binding seal. That's what it was. Or just bind seal. So that is how you basically just automatically lock in X amount of neutral power to protect a portion of yourself in order to complete that development. So you unknowingly, or through Helm's uh, divine intervention, which is probably her uh, way of protecting you, because uh, that could be adding to your neutral amount, or she could have done it for you, You've... I'll draw the circle again. Uh, Paladin is that. That is your negative, that is your positive, that is your <clears throat> neutral. Your bind seal is probably fractioned off a small portion of that, so you're now immune to disease. Like that. Okay. So, like, a, a monk's key will do the same. They will fraction off a small amount of that ability just so they can punch ghosts similar to the balloon theory like it's very that. similar yeah uh we'll use the balloon for say henry who's got what three first level spell slots two first levels something like that uh three three so we'll use this as uh, an example we'll go one two and three and this stuff up here is all your neutral. This is your positive plus negative. Your body will absorb passively through this bit and then fill up at the bottom. You've fractioned off maybe the top bit of the balloon to be like, okay, I'm immune now. But magic items can supplement that for you as well. If you've got like a amulet of proof against disease, a poison and disease or something, that, instead of messing with your inner balloon, you just add an extra balloon that is just full to the brim and does it for you. That's what a magic item does. But that okay, thing, so like... it connects. Okay, so when you attune to it, it adds another... In exchange for a fraction of your soul, it adds another balloon mm -hmm. that does one specific thing. Yeah, that's okay. pretty much what it is. Uh, I have a feeling one of you guys were going to ask about a treatment and how that works. I have a fucking feeling. <laughs> well, well dude. you beat me to it. I just imagine, Good. like, soap bubbles now. List. I'm glad you're on the ball, Moo. Well, yeah, because <laughs> what is attunement? Give up a portion Dude, of your balloon I, to the the creepy magic guy. <laughs> That's all it is. I hope you're ready because I have after we get done with attunement, which is a huge section, I have another fucking huge oh, section. Please don't tell me it's sentient long... weapons. Please don't fuck no, me sentient weapons. that you mentioned that, fuck. that's another big section. No. <laughs> we'll hit that one after my next huge section, because that will segue into it. Okay. Well, but that's, you know, attunement. Right. We're, we're at the hour mark, so what I'm going to say is anyone watching this that isn't the gang seeing my little scribbles here, if you want, come join the Discord. We try and communicate, but there's only, like, what, two others in the team? So, if you join in, we'll get more shit out, and rewards will be coming, <laughs> I promise. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but, yeah. So... Make him sweat, Twitch. Make him sweat. Make me sweat. You'll find the link to the Discord in the About section. And eventually I'll be adding the campaign page once uh, I figure out how to use World Anvil a little bit better. <laughs> yep. yep. Join the 
Yep, check out the World Anvil page. See all the lore that we have on hand that promptly didn't get many updates for months until recently. Yeah, I've been... Like, World Anvil's great, but man, it's so much work. <laughs> it's yes, so yes, much. It I'd rather... I just write a small paragraph about something and with some tiny little bullet points, and I'm happy with that. <laughs> I'm like, eh, there's lore. I didn't flesh out. Yeah, like, I don't care what this country. I don't care like, what this. You want, write, you want to write like a bit about a character? And then there's just all this extraneous stuff that they're asking for. Yeah, like, and you're like filling like, out switch uh, like um writing pages for the PCs. Filling out um Vincent's bio back in the day was a nightmare. Yeah, you so actually there was fill all, out. all this shit I didn't really think about. Yeah, it gets you thinking though. You might not be able to do it immediately, but you just leave it as a work in progress and you're pretty much sorted. But, uh, right. I've had my minute of rest. <laughs> Attunement. Let's go, boys. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to draw a bigger diagram. I'm going to draw a little line over here. So, let's say this is a. Oh, God, that's a really janky jawline. Damn. This is just a random body shape with, say, the soul and the brain or uh, the chest, or whatnot. So it's usually where it works. Uh, you attune to, uh, I don't know, uh, a donut, uh, a cursed donut. So, ah. Uh, I'll draw some sprinkles on it so it doesn't just look like uh, a weird like, sonic ring. Uh, and you attune to that. You can attune to it by portioning up those sections of your your circle. And if you're a truly neutral fighter, you generally have a tiny amount that you give up. But if that's like one slot for that thing. It, if it's cursed, it takes up a little bit more than usual and will change, say, a positive into a negative. And an artificer is different. Because they go, okay, I've got magic, but my neutral bet, I'm going to go bet and bet and bet and bet and bet and bet and bet. And I'm happy with that. Because they're like the masters of just controlling that spot. So they can just add, like, multiple achievement slots while keeping the positive and negatives. And keeping that tiny amount of neutral left. But... Tiny amount. Usually, like, they've got, what, D8 hit points? Yep, D8 of mm -hmm. hit dice. Yes. I know, because I've played one for, like, two years. Yeah, so... They've got a D10 now, I think, which is the official one. Yeah, you'll have like a fraction of that, but the rest of this, that's all achievement slots. And eventually it becomes a like a super task where like level 30, you've got like infinite achievement slots. You just start infinitely dividing those up even further and just portioning it out until you've attuned to everything, essentially. Uh, attuned to the world indeed. Yeah. Uh, for a... Um, an Eldiran elf, they have a special m genetic makeup that adds a second line, and they get one achievement slot from that. Usually. If they are, I believe it's Fian El. Yeah, I think that's what they were. They're the magic ones, yeah. They genetically have th an extra one. So they've just become so accustomed to magic, they've now just got a spare slot hanging around to attune to something. That's through, like, millennia of development, though. That's stuff that people in... Uh, uh, Ashna lore will try and do. They'll try and add an extra one, which is usually done by Bone Charms. Are really dark magic and will corrupt you over time. Um, get Esmer after he asked. You don't want that. <laughs> Esmer coming for you. Uh, 
right. I'm just going to write people don't know. You. People don't know. I, I assume the people at Ash and the Lore have probably figured out a way to get Esmer to just fuck off. Court order. Uh, we, miss, we're not in. <laughs> Nobody's home. Fuck off. Okay, so that's that's right. Point. Bone charm, essentially. Like, what? Does yeah? Does bone? Uh, I might miss that clincher. Does a bone charm either substitute the space being for an additional item, or does it like force itself into your soul space? It it's a it's kind of like a wedge. It will make that extra slot for you. It's like a doctor scalpel that slices for you. However, once you do it. You won't recover that ever again if you get rid of that bone charm. That bit's gone forever. You've lost a fraction of your your soul. So you won't recover as well from injuries or magic won't heal you as well. There are risks for that. So what? the bone charm takes ownership of part of your soul. Yeah, and then if you destroy it, and you've got you've used it up to make an extra slot, you've only got this sort of pizza wedge pac-man looking thing now that's it it's all you've got left so you've ended up dividing even further oh, so speaking of um uh, speaking of souls this is like more about the reincarnation system a little bit but um yeah. when a creature dies yeah do they um do they ascend to the air quote heavens or hells as to fit their um character or do they reincarnate like get washed out then end up back in the world somehow again that can happen so uh going into more uh theological areas but the basic so understanding when there are gods and, and their priests can literally bring back the dead yeah theology is magic um, i mean technically exist in the world right because of the spell reincarnation and mm -hmm. the spells resurrection yes uh, there is a chance for it. So when a cleric casts true resurrection, we'll use this as a good example. So true res for someone at the cusp, so say 199 years, they are basically pushing so much magic through the veil of the worlds and dipping into ye old uh, Raven Queenie's uh, well of souls and just sucking <laughs> that boy back out, putting it back through the veil, back into the the dead guy or whatever. And then you're just, uh, you know, alive again. Woo! Happy days. But you've basically stolen someone. If they're like that old, obviously, they're deep in that well. If someone's just died and you use a revivify, you're just basically tag teaming them. You're just tapping them back in the shoulder and pulling them away, uh, just as they pass that veil. Uh, yeah, that's for people who are rich and have rich friends or buy yeah. spend thousands of gold to bring them back from the dead. Mm -hmm. Just say you have a normal person, peasant no. farmer in Novaria who gets. You get sent out as a conscript, and as like conscripts tend to do, gets taken out by a vastly superior force and dies. And no one resurrects his soul. Assuming he was neither good nor evil in life, what would happen to that soul? There's your answer. Deathwalkers. They will either... They've got like their little list, essentially, and that usually says, take or leave. Yeah, they collect a soul. I yeah. understand that part. We've we've like had long talks about Deathwalker. Mm -hmm. But if the Deathwalker grabs the soul and stuffs it in their soul sack, mm -hmm. what happens to the soul afterwards? They take it to I I, yeah. I know they're taken to Raven Queen's domain. Mm -hmm. Are they stuck there for eternity? No. Or mm -hmm. do they get like reincarnated? What happens to them? There is a period of time where a soul will oh god that was a horrible ass a soul uh, will experience a sort of period of uh recovery because when you die your soul's just ripped from your mortal coil so you're wounded essentially you've kind of got like a chronic 
uh, like a chronic uh, illness almost. But as you reach the afterlife, whatever one you believe in or are ordained, I suppose, uh, you recover. And once that recovery period is over, you can recover faster, you can recover real slow. You're just reincarnated. And you don't remember who you were. Or if you have any magical abilities, you're just reborn as a baby. And there are some mages that can like unlock that door and help you remember a full avatar Aang style. But basically, you just reborn. After it could be two years, it could be two centuries. You never know. Uh, uh. Good example, though, of someone that fucks that entire thing up is a revenant. Someone that is so unwilling to die, they just bring themselves back to life. <laughs> They're just like, yeah, death, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, sure, let, let's do that. And it's like, yeah, angry. Yeah. It's the best way I could draw. <laughs> they just, instead of just dying, they just leave for a bit and then just come back. Like a day later. So, functionally speaking, heaven or hell or anything in between is essentially... A place for a soul to recover until they're drawn back into the world. Pretty much, yeah. And then live life again. Yeah, it's a gas station. And your tank is empty and you're just getting refilled. But Revenants, they've like, I don't know, put sugar in the tank or something? Or just fucked around with the engine and just went, you know what? Fuck it. I'm my own mechanic. I'm coming back. But their body's still damaged from the soul leaving, so they just are zombified. <laughs> so that's... So... Yeah, that's kind of like how like a, a will-o'-wisp will kill you. They'll just rip you, that part of you apart. That's why they do so much damage. But a revenant's just kind of like putting a band-aid when you've been disemboweled. Then here's an important question. Yeah. If um soul, if souls functionally stay in a realm for a while until they're healed and ready to go back to the living. Yeah. Why would um a god, for instance? bother gathering the souls of their worshippers so they're just gonna, you know, eventually leave again. How do they benefit? How do they benefit? There is a part like, of... For instance, why would, um, why would Hiori want to keep Vincent's soul when he dies? He could just, you know, why does he that interest in keeping, like, say, the souls of powerful heroes? Okay. So, the... yeah, so you've got your gods, you've got your old gods, and you've got your creator gods. So I'll just write creator. So your gods use divine magic. Your old gods use divine and cosmic. And creators just use cosmic, right? So for example, there is like a small, I don't know what the word is. It's kind of like a... Is it called like lateral or something like that? When it just goes straight down the line? The cosmic energy from the creator gods trickles down. And for gods to keep their divine magic going, they don't recover they don't rest and recover like people do. They use the souls as batteries, essentially. They use your soul to recharge as well. So once that's done, they will use whatever remains of the result of you fissuring from your body to recharge you are a living battery to them so so, at what level of so if your soul gets grabbed by a god it will delay your soul's recovery essentially well not really they um that's a really good analogy for it. Okay, I'll use the cut analogy. So there's a, a big chonky hand uh, and you've got a little boo-boo and you're bleeding uh, like that. You dying is like putting a band-aid over that. But the blood is the thing that gods will just use like a sippy straw and just use the, rem the remnants of that. So one person... That's not a lot, but say you're a follower of Palor, the god of sunlight... That's a lot of followers. That's You could have like people that are not powerful souls and just have a shitload of them. Or you could have one big soul and just keep sapping off them until they return. 
But if a god dies, that's when shit gets wild, because all the gods scrap for that. <laughs> so, mostly for their position. Uh, okay, uh, so... Here's, here's, this is important, then. Are all souls, functionally speaking, the same in terms of power, or are characters who have, like, higher levels, air quotes, have, do they have more powerful souls where yeah. they create a bigger energy release when they die? Yeah, like, when I, I think it was near the start when I was talking about the, the balloon, uh, which I think was layer three, nope. Layer one? Nope. Yeah, it was layer one, yeah. So... Good example is you're level one, you've got a tiny little balloon. At level 20, you've got a big balloon. So you've got a tiny amount of energy as a level one, or a level zero, you've got the same amount. When you die, you just release a, a fraction of that amount, like usually just your neutral amount. When a wizard dies, for example, at level 20, that just, that's like a nuclear bomb to a god. It's just like, okay, I have a, a big freebie, a big pot of coffee I can just drink from for an X amount of years till this soul disappears. And then we'll see what happens then. So you could have multiple balloons uh, to so, a, you could have 20 balloons to equate to a level 20. That's the best so, way I can describe it. So if I understand this straight, soul there's like there must be a relationship between souls and the magicules inside the body then. Because the balloons you describe are all about the well magic inside of one's body. But the but the souls are distinct from those bodies. <laughs> they're they're sort of the same. Uh um Think of Right. The body is a car. Your soul's the engine. The mana is the fuel. Your soul is powered by the mana, so the more you have, the more stronger your soul becomes. So, think of it... What's a, a Skyrim? Lesser souls, greater souls, etc. Weak things have lesser souls, because they don't have a lot of magic powering themselves, but, like, really powerful magic users or really strong physical fighters, they keep powering themselves with this great amount of energy and then when they die there it goes so therefore would that mean like you say that the souls feed off of um, the magic inside the body yeah so would that mean that if say you stuck them by an anti-magic field for about long enough would their soul just poof out of their body because they ran out of fuel no. Uh, Anti-magic fields are... I need a new page. Anti-magic fields are slightly different. So, like I was saying, the radiation in your body... So, because you're slightly radioactive... I'll just put a little bubble around this guy. An anti-magic field is kind of like putting two lightning rods in the ground that absorb the incoming energy and basically sat from both directions, so they'll take away this bit. But your body is grounded to the to the earth, which is just naturally absorbing stuff. Your feet are absorbing energy for you, even through your boots. You have reserves, almost, uh, which is something I didn't think I would have to talk about because it was a very janky idea. So you have reserves of mana, in case of emergency, um, which are your hit die. That was the idea. You burn your hit okay. dice to keep magic going. All right. So, um, all right. So, what if instead of putting them in an anti magic field, we just pluck somebody from Urathon and drop them into Earth where there is no magic? Would their souls just disappear at some point, assuming they aren't killed by other means? They would begin to tap into a different form of magic. It would be sort of a... Uh, what's uh, the word? A... Ah, uh, oh, damn, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, magic torpor. That's the one. I couldn't remember the word for... So they will just begin to 
Um, the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, fucking Nazi melt face, but age, their body just deteriorates itself. It's completely... It's just like rapid aging to them. They won't be able to cast magic. They just age twice as fast. So, okay. they'll live quite a long time on Earth, but they're just their magic just stops. Their neutral magic is not affected. That just naturally replenishes over time. Regardless. So I have a question going back to faith, then. Mm -hmm. If, uh... So when you die, at what level of... Do gods need you to have a level of faith in them to make claim to your soul? And then if you have no faith to anyone, you just go to the Raven Queen? Like, how does that work? At what level of being religious does do you go to your god's, like, domain? Right, so think of it like a lottery ticket. And you having great faith in one god is like you just filling in the number for that god until the balls are drawn, i.e. you die. If you've not assigned yourself to a god, you just believe in like some things here and there, the Raven Queen gets to pick who you go to. She gets a little portion of it and then just sends you off. You basically get raffled off the <laughs> brain once you get auctioned off. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sold here, five dollar, five dollar, ten dollar. <laughs> and is that time that five, five stars, don't bet. Is that time that you spend then with like uh let's say like Vincent and Heary. Vincent mm -hmm. when Vincent dies he goes to Heary's Great Forest. Yeah. Because, you know, he's he's attached to Heary already. Okay. But say uh say you're not religious not religious and you get sent off to like i don't know the great forest too mm -hmm. uh, as like peasant farmer man mm -hmm. do you do like both people have like a a life so to speak in that great forest like is when vincent dies is he actually going to have like a conscience and like oh, yeah. normal thoughts and running around the forest in that domain as his like you after life yeah or a new life D depending on your beliefs in your god um you basically become your perfect self like what you picture as your perfect self and then appear in that domain you're fully conscious you are corporeal to yourself uh you can see other people normally you're just a ghost to living people uh but it does raise a big question of what uh, happens between the gods, the old gods, and the creators? Because, but uh, I'll say old G. Uh, old gods make pacts. New gods make promises. So, the old gods were like, "You give me this, I will give you this. It's inevitable. If you die this way, you will become this. If you die in another way, you might end up like this." A god will promise you. They'll just say, it'll happen. But if you do against me, you'll end up with this person, etc. But an old god is like, definite, you're going to be like this forever in my servitude. But with the new gods, if you're not religious, you get auctioned off to these gods. The old gods don't get a taste of you. They just, they're like a, they're behind the glass screen, just licking the fucking glass. Just waiting. All right. And then... So in this system mm -hmm. of, you know, Death Walkers take souls, bring them to where they need to go or mm -hmm. to the Raven Queen, and then she dictates where they go. Yes. What are ghosts? What are ghosts? In the world. Like, ghosts that are in the world, are they people that just never made it on a Death Walkers yeah. list? Are they forgotten? Um, like, what is a lost soul so in the world? It actually ties back to what a revenant is. So a revenant is someone who's just so bound to life and their intentions. One second, I've got a fly I need to kill. Got little fucker. Right. Um. So a revenant, obviously, w wrong side of the bent. A revenant will will themselves back to life. 
Nant, uh, Willful Undead sounds. It's a great fucking band name. Uh, so Revenant's a Willful Undead, but if your willpower is not strong enough, or your bond to your body isn't strong enough, you just stay there. You're just limboed, and you become a a, a ghost. Yeah, but then why don't Death Walk come for you? Because they can't. Their... If you so it takes up like the idea of the veil. The veil's not just a line; it's like a little region. And there's like you know there's like tr weird trees, and some trees are sideways, and yada yada. It's like an M C S or nightmare. You're dead. You're deceased. You're dead. Not dead. If you you appear on this side, and you want to go back to there because you want to. And your death walkers, kind of like, I don't know, I'll use Thale as an example. Really super tall, big horns. Cool cape. Why not? He can't get between there. They can't get into this zone. They can only go between this side and that side. Because they have to be there when you die. Because your soul remains around for one minute. They need to be there within that minute to take you away. But if you cross over, that's it. They can't touch you. So then, all right. So if reincarnation is the thing, what happened? All right. So say, hypothetically, Farmer John. All okay. right. He's chilling in his house, dies of a heart attack, okay. becomes a soul, becomes a lost soul, haunts that house. That's his veil. Death walkers can't get him. A bunch right. of adventurers find out that somebody's trying to buy that house but it has a soul in it adventurers show up kill the soul mm -hmm. what happens to that is that soul just completely removed from the system it is stuck there and then was killed and that's the soul so that now it's just gone it or it instead of just becoming nothing it just ex turns into energy instead and it is absorbed by the veil it just goes into something new. So a new life is born, which could be a completely new soul, and that energy is transferred into them. They're not reincarnated. Alright, so basically, the other day when we um, basically killed those three um, ghost knights, we effectively punched them out of creation. Pretty much. You took them out of the race. And now they, they are being, they're turned into glue. <laughs> they're the glue that makes the new souls. You've killed the horse and turned it to glue, and that glue has made a baby. Good riddance. That's the that is the most straightforward answer I give. Souls are horses. If you kill a ghost, you're shotgunning that horse after it broke its leg, and you're turning it into fucking pure god factory glue that is used just to stick a miniature together and just pump it out into the battlefield. <laughs> it's the best way I can describe it. All right, are you ready for the next huge subject? Wait, 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 wait. wait this wait. has been the longest segment of phase one. <laughs> Honestly, this might end up a two-part because I got more. Oh, God. Really I'm, I'm going to try and be concise then. I'm going to say yes or no answers. <laughs> yes, no. Uh, yeah. Going back to the uh, like God worship thing and the... Uh, resurrection thing yeah it, say a person worships like Curie for mm -hmm. their first life mm -hmm. once they get reincarnated and don't remember anything do they are they able to choose yeah. a different religion or yeah you you're just back to a reset the gods don't have a claim to you until you choose okay so there's not like a common thing where as soon as somebody chooses a god they stay with that god Oh no, yeah, you can change any time. Pretty oh. much. There there are examples of people doing that during their lifetime. And it becomes a little feud between two gods because they're like, well, this is the main stage of their <laughs> life. That was the most important to them. I've developed them the most. Why do you get it? Oh, because they went into church before they died. Oh. Yeah, so they were like, well, I had him first of all. He came to me last. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much. It was like, ah, but he died in my domain, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> You're in my domain now, bitch. <laughs> Hell yeah. So he died in the Arc. If someone dies in an Arcanum, they're there forever, by the way. No oh god. 
Zook's got a fucking haunted house. <laughs> you have no fucking idea, dude. <laughs> what happened to the postman? He's got, he literally turned his arcanum into a phylactery at this point, accidentally. The extra-dimensional spaces are chilling. soul prisons. It's horrible. You can choose to All release right. them by killing them. So That's it. Speaking on souls, the next big thing. Mm -hmm. What? So, what play in the grand scheme does material cost play with magic? And more specifically, go. let's go into material cost from base level one magic. Okay. To what happens when, say, Zook sacrifices a soul mm -hmm. for a spell. And I want to get into, obviously, if a cleric were to use material, that's materials going, like, towards the god in some way, I imagine. But what happens, since magic is a background radiation, mm -hmm. when a wizard sacrifices material who are they okay. sacrificing material to there's right so a lot to unpack i'm gonna unpack start. it in a segment so material costs they are based on a practice they're more just the ability to connect to a certain part of magic uh, it's generally through uh there are certain sections of magic that require a sacrifice to be made in order for the magic to fully complete. The gods of magic dictated this. It's a sacrificial key, essentially, to let you use that ability. Because, all in all, they control the magic in the world. They control the amount of radiation that you can absorb. You eventually just go, okay, I need to uh, revivify this person. It's 300 gold, which is the base price on a soul. That is it. That is your base price. And the older that soul is, the more expensive it becomes. So, eventually you go, okay, I need a, a dragon scale, a red dragon scale for Agonizar Scorcher, which is a, I would say canonically Agonizar, vanilla based is a wizard. But in the world, I just went, it's because it, Agonazar was a dragon. So you need something connected to draconic magic, which is slightly different, which has different rituals. But you never consume it. It's just a focus. You channel fire. It's a... a, 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 a what you call, A node for elemental magic. But... Uh, for a wizard... And I don't really know if I can diagram this up, but a, I'm just going to draw a hat with some like some shitty stars on it. Look at that. A wizard uses purely neutral, uh, positive, uh, negative magic. Uh, I'm just going to add G. The consumption of that is released just to the surrounding environment and it is absorbed by nature again it becomes passively absorbed so you could burn i don't know any wizard spells that use components that are consumed uh i don't know actually i don't actually know wizard spells that well i never play wizard I don't know any off the top of my head because I'm playing a paladin right now. Uh, what's what is a spell that a wizard uses? Oh, you know what? Identify uses a pearl. He uses a what? Pearl. Pearl. A pearl is a bonus. It doesn't get consumed though. I was talking more like a pearl, like a big shiny thing from clam to be Just go with the wish spell. A wish spell, I can't remember what that uses up. Uh, about 50,000 gold and like gemstones. Alright, so 50k gem and in Urethan, it consumes a portion of your soul. So you get to give up a bit of that and a bit of your magic. Does it not? 
just a verbal spell. Okay, well, then it just takes a portion of your soul then. Okay. Because obviously it takes, there's a chance that you'll never be able to cast it again, which is why that exists. <clears throat> so you're giving up this, essentially. So there is a chance over time you'll start fragmenting parts of your body. And then once you stop being able to use that, you've lost a chunk. And that little pizza wedge there is just released his energy into trees into uh new spooky ghosts Ooh. or it's just sapped by other people so you just release a shitload of energy and it's just you're a, a fallout words, you're the fallout of a bomb in other essentially. Words, always cash wish through a ring of three wishes pretty much that a ring of three wishes is someone's soul inside of it that has just been stripped to its bare bones. So there's no consciousness, it's just pure chonky energy. A caffeine shot, essentially. To In other words, it's probably a fairly evil. That's a fairly oh, yeah. evil magic I'm to make, now that I think about it. Yeah. It's horrible. Oh. There you go. Magic circle. Uses up holy water, powdered silver, and iron worth at least 100 gold, which the spell consumes. Those... Of warning. Those items are inherently... They have a magical value. So, once you've put your part of your magic in there and made the, the circle, which is use up that components, that's just a battery for it. It's just charging it. Until it is dispelled. And so you just. I guess that does explain why some of our characters have been able to cast spells by just melting gold into air, essentially. Yeah. Uh, like straight up gold cost. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, but I would say that doesn't exist now. But actually, uh, you need diamonds. You need the pretty diamonds. Which the gods are happy enough to take the value of that for a soul. Because diamonds have a lot of magical value. <laughs> so how much potential power does a soul have when used as a material? And what happens to that soul? Oh, okay. So, best way to do that, lichdom. Uh, it'd be lichdom. So... Well, lich keeps souls, but what happens no, when you... They like, use souls. When you keep a soul, well, don't they don't no. they put it in the phylactery and then drain it over time using it? Yeah, that, what that's what they like immediately use a soul on a spell. On a like spell. Were, well, yeah, if you were going to use it to like, you were using that as a material component for something, okay. to cast something. Wait, like so what a lich eats that? a soul, they take fragments of it to, what reinforce or replace piece of their own soul they lost. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, a lich has... Uh, I just drew that a bit too hard there. So a lich has mostly negative ability. Well, actually, it'll be more negative there. They've got a tiny amount of neutral. A uh, Adding in a, a spooky boy. I'll just add in a little ghosty there. They essentially just restart like that. So they just strip you, suck all your energy in, and reboot themselves. And if they die, so like, dead, yeah, they will replace their soul with someone else's. But a lich has like their own soul separate. So they, kind of like a horcrux, they'll just put their own soul in a little bauble or something that they keep hidden away. And keep a fraction of that in their body, which is why they're constantly refilling themselves because that little bead of the soul can't absorb things normally they will just replace themselves they like shed skin like a lizard almost and you could be speaking to a completely different person the next time you find one uh i don't know any liches that you guys have befriended you might next campaign <laughs> and it's not gonna be jigstrokes it won't be jigstrokes <laughs> Good old Dickstroke the Lich. No, nah, he's dead. We will yeah. meet him eventually. Dickstroke he's dead. dead. Dickstroke is dead. Damn shame. He stroked his last dick. 
<laughs> Zarakaras is a good example. Like the, 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 the Lich Queen, who has so many phylacteries, but is suspended behind the gates. Ah, uh, Zarakaras. The Ratchet Ass. The Ratchet Ass. <laughs> I want to see Lucius say that. See fucking big bony ass <laughs> finger come out like, I didn't mean ah, it. The ratchet ass dead. <laughs> what is he, the monkey? <laughs> it's not Christmas. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Help, help me. I'm in danger. <laughs> uncle, uncle. So, what would happen to a soul if someone sacked it for a spell? The magic might not exist in the world right now, but with the it, people having the ability to make spells, it, I imagine some bad evil guy at some point is going to make a spell that uses a soul as a... There's, uh, there's not really soul magic. You, the only magic that uses a soul would be resurrective spells, which suck souls back into the body, or... Um, no animation animation of dead things if you have the soul of someone that you want to animate when they're dead if you use their soul you've permanently got them in your employ because you've just taken their soul ground it in a little sniffy dust and just loaded up the corpse with it and just went you're mine now and they're just constantly running on solar power essentially is that Basically, the same magic that's then used if somebody like puts a soul into a, a construct, like for Warforge. Yeah, they. That's what sentient items are. They're souls. They just been stuffed in and kept there. So even if they have free will, even if they have free will, they are basically just reprogrammed and restrained by magical barriers, incantations. Uh, corrupt magic sigils or they uh, have been subjected to dark magic like blood magic, necromancy or um, oh, there's another dark magic and I can't remember what it's called um, eldritch magic that can corrupt it and they just change so you can have a good person in the sort of cas or sort of coast, whatever it's called then they will corrupt after centuries and become focused on the, the main objectives. So it, they usually have a, an objective. Most of them do anyway. So it's like, I need to kill this thing and only this thing. And that's what they do. That's all they do. So all forms of that, uh, putting a soul into like an item or a construct is inherently evil. And oh, it's very evil. <laughs> a very evil thing to do All right. so, so even if somebody were like to try and save a friend of theirs by putting them in it, a concert, it's yeah. still a corrupt the soul it is there is a chance that the soul won't be corrupted if you have not put in magic that is damaging to the soul so you don't use any necromantic like animation or blood magic or eldritch capabilities and you just use straightforward positive or neutral stuff, they'll be fine. They'll be completely fine. Okay. There is a chance they'll go insane just naturally over time from being dead. But, yeah. Wait, would that mean that if it's like a spell that affects the soul, would that mean that power kill does something to the soul to separate from the body? Yeah, power kill doesn't let the soul go. You just nuke the soul you just turn it to vapor and it's gone it's just returned as energy it's disappeared power words affect the soul directly they don't because your soul has a name on its own you say the true name of something and it kills it which is, uh, i can't remember the war there's a word for name magic i think it's called onomancy onomancy something like that word magic all right, so if it just nukes the soul and disperses it, then why do um like resurrection spells work on somebody who's been killed by a power word? You basically pull on a like a save file almost. The body is still has a register of that energy, and will just gather the power back and just 
patch it up a little bit. You're going to be wonky. You're not going to be fully Compass Mantis for a very long time. But you'll be alive. Okay, so, like, because I know that Seth, the first campaign, was taken out by a power word kill and resurrected. Oh, yeah, he's going to be a, he's a little that... wonky. He's a little wonky up there. I'm just wondering, like, would that mean that we don't have the exact same Seth? <sighs> he's definitely not the same. He'll act the same. He'll talk the same. He'll think the same. But there's something just not quite ticking normally inside. You've taken a couple of cogs out, or you've cracked a few oh. bits and pieces. And the more you resurrect someone, the more cracks appear, and then they just go nuts. They, their soul just can't hold on anymore. And because after a certain threshold, I think it's after your con, no, after your charisma mod of resurrections, your soul starts to deteriorate faster and you lose hit die. Every time you resurrect, you lose a hit die permanently. It's gone. And when you hit zero, no more soul. It cannot be recovered. There's not enough sellotape, band-aids, and super glue to fix you up. Unless you use a wish spell. In that case, something will go wrong. Something really bad will go wrong. So, going to well, use that as, as the new canon for why Sethi is still so focused on the war and helping people and everything. Yeah, he's. I think he's been resurrected, what, three times, if I remember? Oh, feel bad for Doge. Every time we bring him back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's already fucked up. He's got five other voices in his head now that are constantly yeah. vying for control. <laughs> and one of them is yeah, in I, control. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, honestly, we already accept that Doge will be a villain for, like, another species. <laughs> I'm not going to talk not about it. Stop making my characters insane. <laughs> not necessarily us for some other PCs, but... Yeah, that's scary because, if I recall correctly, yeah, Throne died like twice. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Well, he has 18 Christmas, so he has like a few more in him. I mean, you can use someone else's soul to replenish a broken one. They're just gonna be split personality for a while and then eventually they'll just merge and say uh, you merge a thief with a paladin they're going to be a kleptomaniac priest eventually oh, <laughs> you mean hey, a I catholic <laughs> I don't mean it I don't mean it I don't mean it I promise Wait, I have a I have a question then, Moo. If you keep resurrecting the same soul and that keeps causing cracks in a soul, mm -hmm. what does reincarnation do? Reincarn spell reincarnation. Does that if you did that to somebody that had a cracked soul, would it repair the soul? It almost so, does, does it you not, or um think of it like a cracked it bit crack of it itself. It's like a cracked bit of plasterboard. You just filling in the cracks with a new bit of plaster and putting it into a new vessel and it's fine uh, it's like having an organ donor almost you've just made a new platform for that organ to survive in and it works that body is naturally designed to take on a broken soul so that body fills in the cracks and the soul's fine so in a sense, reincarnation is the safest way to yeah. resurrect someone. Pretty much. Obviously, the more you reincarnate someone, the more cracks do appear and the more it has to fill in. So eventually it will stop working and the bodies won't appear. It'll just stop. And that's that's when the gods sort of intervene. They're just kind of like, no more. Stop. There is a point where your body just won't come back. Just one more time. Just one more time. Don't worry about it. I'll give you I, I, I assume there must have been at least one case where some wizard or something probably managed to get past that threshold. Yeah, that's who Zarakaras is. The, the Lich Queen yeah. is someone that has, possesses such a fractured soul. Her soul is in several places. And she keeps a hold of the main one, like the little bead that has uh, no humanity and just wants to eat people, pretty much. 
Yeah, you cannibalism. Pretty much. And if you try and reincarnate her, it won't work because there's not enough there to stick to. So she's just a walking, talking corpse with a big penchant for your your little squishy energy boot. <laughs> your, your fucking apple juice boy. <laughs> ah, Red Bull. Ah. Sexy time. <laughs> <laughs> so i have a theoretical magical question for you then yeah if a high level wizard uh -huh. has i don't know they've they've made a million clones yeah like straight up have a million clones okay and then they go and end up fighting another wizard and that wizard power word kills them Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, they they come back. I mean, that's the clone spell. They essentially have a million lives, no mm -hmm. matter what. Yeah. But if Power Word Kill targets your soul and blasts out of existence, what would happen if, for nine thousand of those clone lives, you kept getting you kept dying to Power Word Kill? So, like, what is that person at <clears throat> nine thousand and one? Okay. Because, like, are they super twisted and insane, or what? Okay, so you've got your wizard that makes a, a complete duplicate of themselves. And I'll just write OG, and this is clone. And you get power... Beep. <laughs> power word killed. Uh, when you've cloned yourself, you've basically made a link... To the next thing you made a power line essentially to the clone so when your soul gets fucking yoted so you get yeet soul soul yeet you just get sent into the all your energy gets put into the clone and you wake up with a reinstated soul not all normally put together and it takes a couple of days, maybe a week, maybe a couple of years for you to become normal again. Over time, that can get damaged and you eventually just become a, a crazy babbling lunatic by maybe 10 down the line, depending how severe that was. But you're mentioning power word kill. Depending on how you have major clone i'm assuming through the clone spell or through uh either some sort of golemancy almost say right okay that's the best way i could describe it so when you clone yourself you're tied to the next clone and that clone's tied to the next clone and the next one and so on as that gets stretched out further and further, there is a longer period of time in which you are recovering for. So your first one, that could be, I'll say a week. And the next time it'll be two weeks, for example. I'm just using a double. By 9,000, you'll be dead before you're sane again. Unless you're immortal. So. Well, I mean, at, in this theoretical thing, we are essentially talking about an immortal. He's died 9,000 times out of a million lives. Okay, so... Uh, he's going to be around yeah. a lot. If he's insane at 9,000, that's a crazy motherfucker that is hard to kill. Right, so my assumption was that you were talking about a mortal person that has cloned themselves 9,000 times. Yeah, which yeah. So I'm saying essentially immortality. It's it, not real immortality. It, it is... Uh, not... T it's... Physical immortality, almost. It's, uh, sorry, it's uh, spiritual immortality. You're passing to your next form, almost. Uh, yeah, by 9,000, you're going to be nuts, have no control over your magic, so you'll be firing off fireballs in the middle of, I don't know, downtown fruit market or something, or taking a shit and firing off a thunder wave, and all these random things will happen. You're just a walking danger to everyone you'll be locked up in an anti-magic cell in no time <laughs> just like <laughs> or just killed until you can control yourself again yeah but if you you forget how to clone which you probably will by 9,000 iterations of yourself because you 
can't read properly because you're nuts. You're just the end of the line. There is a there is a point where your body's just kind of go. So there's a point no where more than what? To make no more than two to three clones. Well, if you're a say you're a human and you've cloned yourself at age twenty, and it takes you a year to recover from dying and being cloned. Uh, over time, that year will double and double, and then eventually it'll take you the remainder of your living life to resurrect, like, to become normal where you can can't make that clone again. And by that point, what's the point? You'll be dead. You'll be at death's gate cloning your dying body. So you're just going to come back dying again. Death, you'll never fucking take me, bitch. I got 9,000 more. I can just see the death walker sitting in a fucking rocking chair with a magazine, fucking cigarette, just like, fuck. There he goes again. <laughs> Is he dead yet? No, nope, there's no Fucking one. hat down, corn sticking out in the mouth. Is he dead yet? Zuka, you could no. be the spiteful motherfucker that dies in his own arcanum. <laughs> Nobody gets my soul, but I get my soul. <laughs> just, I mean, it would just keep going around and then some other guy will get your arcanum over time. It's just loaned out to someone else. Yo, I fucking, I pray for whoever inherits Zook's arcanum. He wouldn't even leave that to his own kids. That what? motherfucker is Why a is heavy the, cursed. What, what, what is this, fucking storage wars? Like, <laughs> just <laughs> buy the fucking arcanum. Pizza boxes. That guy's in a yeah, pit. Will, what the yeah, fuck? This topic will definitely need a part two. Hey. Maybe not now. There's a G's. We'll need a part two. Ah, God. Yeah, I feel like we've right. only really gotten through like yeah. half of magic. Yeah, we have only gone halfway through. Uh, what I'll do though is I'm gonna, I'm gonna just make up part two. This is part one of Magic Legends. What? We're one. only. We're only at the two hour mark, Moo. I told you this is going to be a long motherfucker. Yeah, but I want to have a, an evening where I don't have to keep explaining myself through diagrams. <laughs> That'll never happen. We're only on layer I 16. Just, I'm, gonna, fine. I'm only on layer 16, yeah. But yeah, we'll, we'll make a two-parter. And then eventually, maybe I'll ask you guys some questions. <laughs> so. Yeah, if we get to that point. If you remember in ten more hours on this topic. <laughs> <laughs> part one, part two. Uh, Welcome back to part nine hundred. Congratulations, Moo. I wrote down fifty-three questions for the topic. Oh no, Jesus! He answered nine of them. <laughs> Magic and its lore and history. And by the way, like if you think we've even like scratched the surface, we haven't even touched history yet no we haven't even gotten into that half of the subject and we're halfway through this oh, half we've I just know. done we, we, we've just done like the theoretical physics part of it yeah, yeah. we did we at the start it's gonna be super nerdy and then we immediately went into like magical theory in the world of D&D. <laughs> we basically went into quantum not physics only, of magic, essentially. Not only is it, it's so nerdy that Moo literally named, like, friggin' theories for magic in his universe. I, I did write them a long time ago. I mean, I said that it's the divining rod theory for the balloons, because it's usually, like, it's meant to be a rod, but a balloon is such a better analogy. It's so much easier to draw. <laughs> so it's the balloon theory now, so fuck it. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll, I'm just gonna call the stream here. I don't have the energy to keep going <laughs> until until next time we do it, which will be what two weeks away. Cause we usually do some TTS the following Saturday. Oh my god, I feel like we wing it. We usually do. Yeah. I'll thank everyone for watching this. <laughs> Yeah. Fucking wild <laughs> deep dive into a world that is completely fictitious. <laughs> How we're talking you're about yeeting awake, souls. You're, you're still awake listening to this. You're a true nerd. Feel proud. You're a true nerd, and we hope to see you back in fucking. <laughs>
can't do this 53 question plus <laughs> long stream. Part two of 10, baby. Oh. Let's go. Oh. Yeah, just right. saying, 53 questions. We got through nine of them. Yeah. And that's 53 and in the first half. We haven't even hit history. You're fucked. Yeah, yep. can't confirm. I got 23 <laughs> questions for history. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All the other questions that some of those answers will bring up as well. Oh, oh and I'm gonna make you deep dive lore. Boy, you better be ready. Oh, oh you better study. look at this way. Look at this way, Bill. And they get a physical copy. So this, this is all said and done. You what? You should have enough material to literally publish your own campaign setting at this rate. I have about a hundred pages ready to go. By the way. <laughs> Triple Guess what, bitch? When we're done with um the topic, I'll have another 100. Moon's Guide to all Quantum Physics of Magic. I can, I can build you a set of questions. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Encourage it. Based on building an alternative magic system. Oh. The current one. That can exist parallel. Oh, God. Like a hard magic system? Yeah. This is oh. good. <laughs> Ah, oh, dear Moon God. is in what we call exquisite levels of agony. Yeah. I don't think he. I don't think he came to this table expecting. I wasn't expecting what, fifty-three like, questions. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, dude, that was gonna happen no matter what. I probably have another fifty-three to a hundred questions that will come off of his fifty-three questions. Like you're. You don't even under. I. It's, it's still not settled in how fucked you are. I'm begging like you, for mercy. This is. I'm telling you, this is like a fucking thirty-hour topic. We. You, you get ready. They're gonna be. You're gonna have to playlist this motherfucker. God, I'm gonna end up having to do a bonus That's podcast be tomorrow, ain't I? Just like for the session. Then a stream before the session. More bad actually, because Moo had a fucking. He needed a break after like nine questions. <laughs> but yeah, I, I will. I will call the stream here because we're gonna get too far into this, and it's just gonna be a nightmare after the fact. I need to power down with some Uno. And we'll probably either pick up early before the session tomorrow or next week or the week after, depending on what we decide to do. How about you guys? Figure it out. We'll look at schedules. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see how our schedules work out. There's open. Until next, yeah. until next time, boys. Yeah, until next time. Right. Hell yeah. Stay safe out there, adventurers. Chill for now, and we're gonna get rid of the, the cameras. Bye. Bye, Stormbird. We're a <laughs>